Hey designers, Matthew here. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to make sure that we had a record of some of the projects that we had worked on here in our workshop um, here over at Yale. So I know that uh, what I'm not going to include in these videos is I'm not going to include some of the kind of exploration stuff that we did uh, because I know that that's, there's a ton of resources for that already. And the video that I captured while we were actually working in uh, in class was actually, it's a little frenetic and a little scattered, and it's hard to kind of follow all of the things that are going on. So I want to take a moment to recreate a kind of beginning-to-end look at the project specifically that we set out to do in this workshop. And with that in mind, the one I want us to start with is this little simple uh, kind of first playback tool that we're, uh, that we looked at building. Now, I know that when we were working on this in our workshop that it felt like this was kind of a frustrating examination of lots of different concepts that were spread all over the place, and that's, that's actually okay. That's precisely the kind of thing that I wanted us to do in class, because this kind of a project kind of takes us through all the things that we might experience anytime we're building something complete here inside of Touch Designer. We have to deal with the kind of questions of how do we control this thing, right? We've got a little control panel that lives over here on the left-hand side. We get to think about what are the outputs, or what does the output look like uh, for this thing that we're building, right? Because we not only want to like, control it, but we also want to send something out of a projector or out of another screen. We get to think about how chops are used in terms of control systems. We can think about how tops are used as kind of texture engines, how we can make some changes to those. Right, we're going to look at how we can build some sliders here to do things like change around the parameters of some, uh, some other elements. We also get to look at how we can use some very simple pieces of Python to drive a few um, simple kind of uh, processes related to playing back files. With almost every project that you kind of undertake here inside of Touch, and almost every project that I work on these days, these are all the kind of primary ingredients that I have to think about. How do I push around some files? How do I load a file? How do I use some Python to execute a few pieces of my code? How do I change the parameters of some operators with um, channel operators? And how do I control those chops in some interesting way? So while it might seem frustrating, this includes all of the kind of base ingredients, all the essential ingredients that we have to understand anytime we build uh, a tool that we want to use, especially in the context of performance. So with that in mind, right, let's dig in here. I'm going to break up this video into segments so you can do them kind of one at a time. Uh, I tend to work pretty quickly, and so uh, part of the reason this video exists is so that you can watch it, play it, pause it, rewind it. Um, you know, if you need to like just watch through it one time to get a sense of how this is going to work and you need to watch it again later to actually follow along, great. If you want to, you know, follow along as we go and pause to kind of let things catch up uh, and then restart it again, that's totally okay. This is a resource for you to use and come back to as much as you need to. So what is it that we're going to build? We're going to build something that's got a little movie bin over here on the left-hand side. And clicking on one of these movies will actually swap out the output video that's happening over here on the right. We're also going to build a set of sliders that let us control what that video ends up looking like, right? So we can do some effects, change that in some way. And then we also want to make sure that when we click on another video, we reset these parameters. So that's the kind of foundational pieces that we're going to look at. You'll also notice that these little videos only play when we mouse over them. Right? Some of the movement is real subtle, but some of the movement we can see here pretty clearly. Um, and that's going to help conserve some resources for us, right? So we're only ever playing the thing that we're either looking at actively as an output or the video that we want to kind of get a sense of what it's doing. So that's where we're headed here in uh, the next little segment. And I'll try to break that up into a few different videos uh, so it doesn't feel like you have to just power through one big long one to get to the end of this. Okay, so how on earth do we get started with all of this? So if you've just fired up Touch Designer, you should see a network that looks something like this. This is the default network that we start in. And we're going to go ahead and select all these things and get rid of them. So I've box selected them by using my right mouse button. I'm going to click and hold that to drag select. Select all these operators and hit delete to clear them out. So 
we noticed before that we actually had two different containers that were involved, right? So let's take a look at that one more time. We have these two sections. Now, I tend to like to work with uh, container components here in Touch Designer to kind of segment my outputs. Um, and that's kind of like one of the ways that I like to think about how these things work, because uh, it just helps me kind of mentally. So to do that, we're going to head over to our comps page. We're going to add a container here, and we can just copy-paste that so we've got two. I like to use pretty consistent naming conventions, so I'm going to go ahead and leave container here uh, as a kind of prefix. I'm going to add an underscore. I'm going to indicate that one of these is my UI, and the other one is my output. Now, it'll be useful here for just a hot second to kind of see what's going on, what we're doing, right? So, um, let's change one other thing here real fast. We're going to zoom out. We're going to make sure that our container is selected. Uh, we want to make sure that it's 1280 by 720. That's great. We're going to split our screen here. On our left-hand side, let's go ahead and use the drop-down menu to make sure that this is going to display our panel. So this is actually going to display, over here on the left-hand side, this little bit right here. So this little black window that we see is actually represented over here on the left-hand side. Uh, we're going to do that for right now just so we can do a few things. When I get started, we talked about this in class, I like to make sure that I select uh, some colors to kind of help me understand where my pieces kind of live and exist. This kind of wireframing practice is what I do to try and make sure that I have an understanding of what's going on in my network when I'm initially working. So um, taking a look at this, now I've already made some decisions about scale and size. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and take advantage of those for a hot minute here. And so I happen to know that this output over on the left-hand side, uh, I want that to be uh, the dimensions of, use our little layout page over here, I want that to be 958 by 720. So we can see that's kind of moved and shaped itself up over here. My UI piece I happen to know that I want it to be 322 by 720. Now, you know, uh, one of you asked a lovely question. I'm sorry, I'm going to, like, I'll use really vague references to folks so I don't actually use names in this video uh, to kind of protect everybody's privacy because I don't want to, you know, do anything that outs anybody or positions anyone. I want to make sure that I respect everyone's privacy in these. So I'm going to try and make sure that I don't use any specific names. Um, one of you fine uh, designers asked, well, you know, why did you choose this kind of seemingly arbitrary uh, dimension of 322? And I did that because we're going to put some little uh, video thumbnails in there, right? If we remember those, we can bring this piece over. These little pieces, I want those to be 160 wide. And specifically what I mean here is this little video, that's going to be 160, this will also be 160, and this little gutter is going to be 2 pixels wide. So that's how we arrived at 322. Now if we look over here on the left, we can see that what we end up with doesn't quite look right. It seems like everything is still left justified. So what we need to do over here on the right hand side is we're going to back out, we're going to look at our project container, and we're going to use this align parameter to make sure that we're aligned left to right. Now, already that seems better, but we're missing something still, right? It seems like these two things have flopped their order in terms of what we want. And what we can do to make sure these are correctly aligned the way we want them to be is we're going to use this align order. So our container UI, we're going to leave that with an align order of 0. Our output, we're going to change that align order to 1. So now that's kind of corrected what we've got going on here. So I'm going to make sure that I keep in mind one of the things that I, I heard one of us say in the, the workshop is that it's often useful to kind of have a sense of where we're going kind of uh, from the end of our project back to the beginning pieces of it. So um, instead of kind of digging right into our UI this time, we're going to look in our output first. So over here in our output, we're going to add a movie file in. We're also going to connect that to a level, because I'd like to be able to change the levels that are involved in this at some point. I want to be able to do an HSV adjust. I want to adjust the color of this a little bit. And then I'm going to attach this to a null, because our null is going to represent our final output. And I'm going to call this null final. Wonderful. Now I'm going to head up a layer. 
on my container output, I don't need this blue kind of uh, coloring anymore, so I'm going to turn the alpha of that down. On the panel page, I'm going to set the background top to be dot slash null final. And what this means is this is a, a reference path that means look inside of this component and look for the component called null final. So in all of this, the names that we use for our components, right, or the names that we use for our operators, is something that's important for us to consider and important for us to keep in mind. So here we've got dot slash look inside for null final. Now looking at this we can tell the aspect ratio is not quite right and what's happening is we can see the top fills parameter uh, the top fill parameter on this container is set to stretch. So that's going to kind of squash our texture to make sure it fits in this output. Now we could fix that up here on the container level but it's my preference is not to do that. My preference is to make sure that the texture I'm working with is the same as what the uh, output looks like or what the container's behaving as. Uh, because otherwise it can get a little bit dicey to understand what exactly is going on and where we're making some changes. So we moved back inside of our container. We're going to move in here and we're going to look at one of the reasons again that we end things with a null. Because we've ended our kind of series of operators here with a null, what we can do is we can insert an operator and make some changes without having to, to change any of our references or make any other alterations later on. So I'm going to insert an operator. I'm going to insert a fit top. So a fit top is going to allow me to change some of the pieces that are working here in terms of how I'm filling up this texture. Now in my fit top, uh, I want to go ahead and make sure that I use my parents parameters for height and width. Now what we looked at in class is that we can actually write that expression parent.par.w, the width, and we can write the height expression here to get that all figured out. Now technically speaking, uh, this isn't my favorite, or I, to be totally honest, this is my favorite way of working, but it's not the most efficient way of working. Um, and that's because the way Python works here inside of Touch Designer, um, this particular set of ex expressions are going to be evaluated every time something passes through this operator. So that's not the most ideal way to do that, do this particular operation. That's, that's all right. We can work around that because we can use a parameter chop here. So a parameter chop lets us point at a particular operator and it's going to give us a list of all the parameters that are associated with it. So for example, if we dragged our movie file in over here, we'd be able to see all the parameters that are associated with all of the pages here in this operator. Right? So what we want to look at instead, and we can let's just take one closer look at that. So for example, let's see the play parameter here. And if we look over here, we should be able to find a play parameter that's here inside of uh, this parameter chop. So what I want to look at as an operator, my target operator for this is dot dot slash, my parent. And the parameters that I'm interested in are width and height. And if you're scratching your head and saying, well, how on earth did you come up with those uh, names? If I look here at my container, if I open up my width and height, I can see their parameter names are exposed when I reveal some more pieces of what's going on in my parameters. So W and H happen to be the parameters that I want. Right? These are our friendly names here, and these are our parameter names. And so we can use width and height in here to do exactly those things. Now I'm going to attach this to a null, just like you might expect. I'm going to scoot that over on towards our fit. And I'm going to drag these right on down. I'm going to export both of these parameters. That should be our parent. Dot, dot, slash. There. Oh, excuse me. Just dot dot. Got that mixed up there. My apologies. Not dot dot slash. Just dot dot to look up at our parent. Wonderful. So we're going to go ahead and leave that be for just one moment. And now we've kind of got our output set up over here. Now it's a banana at the moment, which is, that's not what we want it to be eventually, but that is what we're going to kind of leave it as for a moment. We're going to come back to this after we've set up some of our control pieces.